Hey you, Jay here, and this is my roommate Ella. So I am an artist, and I'm gonna draw some conclusions, so to speak. Get it? Draw. But then you have a brain. You may draw your own. Please tell us. Maybe we'll all learn something. We often hear of the terrible childhoods of serial killers. Question their story. Serial killers are liars. Shocking, I know. And besides, they want you to feel sorry for them. No doubt many had bad childhoods, but two of the baddest childhoods, in my opinion, were endured by Henry Lee Lucas and Aileen Mornos. What do you think? You don't want to look at my talking head, so I'll sketch Henry as I tell his story, and you can watch that. It was 1983. Shoulder pads were in style, and Henry was living the best life he had ever lived. He had been arrested and jailed by the Texas Rangers. I know what you're thinking. If being in jail in Texas and ultimately being charged with murder is the best life he ever lived, how bad was the rest of his life? The answer is bad. Real bad. Born in Blacksburg, Virginia in 1936, the unwanted child of two alcoholics. It's not a promising start. And it got worse. His father lost his legs in a railroad accident, and his violent mother turned tricks in their decaying cabin. With the kids watching, his brother stabbed him in the eye, which was ignored until it was so infected it had to be removed. When he was seven, his mother hit him in the back of the head with a two-by-four, and he was unconscious for 30 hours. Later tests confirmed brain damage. He quit school in fourth grade and was in and out of jail. Here's a yuck warning. He claimed his uncle taught him to kill animals and have sex with the carcasses. But then he claimed a lot of things. I warned you there'd be gross stuff. Now you might be thinking, of course he grew up to be a killer. How could it be otherwise? But consider this. His eight siblings grew up in the same house and did not turn out to be killers. In the Texas jail, Henry found out that if he confessed to murders, he was treated well. He got cigarettes, fast food, and strawberry milkshakes. He also got lots of attention, even fame. He was treated with respect. He liked it, naturally enough. So he first confessed to a few murders, then a hundred, two hundred, six hundred, supposedly committed all over America as he drifted down her highways. This got the attention of the news media. The Rangers' superhero reputation was through the roof. So they contacted other law enforcement with unsolved murder cases and invited them to interview Henry about them. He pretty much confessed to all of them. He was provided details and was even taken to crime scenes. Old Henry could sure spin a yarn. Turns out he had been provided with information during interviews which he memorized and spit back at them. Kind of like what you do to pass some college courses. He was asked leading questions, and he faked it till he made it. I strangled her with a phone cord and threw the body in the culvert, etc., etc. The police got to close cases as solved, and the rangers got to be heroes. Henry got attention and strawberry milkshakes. Win, win, win. Eventually, it was proven he could not have done all those murders. He was in a completely different state and had not mastered teleportation. They should have been suspicious when he said he had killed in Japan. How did you get there, they asked. I drove, he answered. In the aftermath, the Texas Rangers covered up their blunders. Only 20 of the 200 cases were ever reopened. The tragedy, of course, is that the real killers got away with murder and the victims' families never got a truthful answer to their haunting questions. One murder he claimed was the notorious Orange Socks case. Her unidentified naked body was found wearing only orange socks, hence the name. He was convicted for that and sentenced to death. The death sentence was commuted by none other than then Texas Governor George W. Bush. When proof came forth, that Lucas was out of state at the time of the murder. He still had the other life sentences, however. Lucas finally recanted his confessions, admitting only to the murder of his mother. 
for which he had been convicted in 1960 and released 10 years later. He died in prison of natural causes in 2001. What do you think? Could any interventions have sent him on a better path? Would you confess in Henry's position? Would you admit wrongdoing if you were a Texas Ranger? Do you think Henry killed anyone besides his mother? I'd like your opinion. Oh no, I've run out of art supplies. I can't finish this. I've got to go to Amazon and order some, and then I'll finish this later. Please like, share, and subscribe, all of those things. And thank you for that. Remember, think responsibly and stay awesome.